how I built this DIY media console made with pre-finished maple plywood and dark walnut hardwood. Let's get started. All right, so first step in this project is to set up my workbench. If you haven't seen the video where I created this workbench, check it out right here. Uh, after I got the workbench set up, I went ahead and pulled out the piece of pre-finished maple plywood. I got a four by eight sheet piece. Uh, for those of you who are thinking about doing this project, uh, just a heads up that the pre-finished maple is not the easiest to work with. It does chip, so keep that in mind. As you can see here, I'm using my chalk line to mark out the sections that I'll be cutting this plywood up into with my circular saw. I usually cut down the sections of a big piece of plywood like this uh, in this way, I use my circular saw, I use the chalk line, and I use the chalk line because it's a good way to get a really good straight line without having that long of a straight edge. Uh, and then I take those pieces and I actually square them up fully on my table saw. This is a good way to do it if you have a, ta a, a small table saw like I do. From there I went ahead and cut everything down to the proper length. Once I had cut everything down to the proper length and width, uh, or at least the rough width, I went ahead and took out my table saw and finished everything up with the straight edge on the board. And as you can see here, I used some of this masking tape to tape off the section that I would be cutting. Uh, this helps prevent the chip out that happens with this pre-finished plywood. It happens with a lot of plywood, but it happens even more with this plywood uh, because that top layer is super uh, finished. It's been super interesting working in a completely new shop and not having the workbenches that I had in my shop back in Montana. Uh, and I've had to figure out different ways to use this table saw, for instance, on different work surfaces without having a designated outfeed table. Um, but in the end, it's worked out. And um, it's all part of kind of having a portable workshop, which a lot of you understand <laughs> how that feels. Once I had finished cutting everything down to size, I laid out the two pieces of plywood that would serve as the base and the top of the media console, and then I marked out the sections where I would be making a dado cut. There are many different ways to make dado cuts, as you probably all know, um, but today I'll be using my router to make these dado cuts, and I'll uh, be using a piece of plywood as a fence, uh, kind of measure everything out, and then I use the, the plywood clamp down to the workpiece um, to cut out the dado. There are a lot of different videos on the internet of people creating dado jigs that can attach to your workpiece in a really quick manner using clamps and a separate piece of plywood like this. It takes a little bit of time and you, you have to double check everything uh, or else you might end up with a dado cut that isn't very straight. Um, so I might eventually make one of these uh, like a video. But in the meantime, this works. You can place your dado cuts on this media console any place that you'd like uh, in order to kind of structure the, the console in, in you know, the fashion that you want. Uh, for this project and for, for, or for my project, I went ahead and placed you know, one on each end and then, and then one in the middle. 
after finishing all the dado cuts, I went ahead and dry fitted the entire media console before I moved on to doing the glue up. To prep for the glue up, I used some masking tape on the outside of the dado cuts. Uh, this way, when the glue squeezes out, it won't get onto that pre-finished plywood and I won't have to sand it off or scrape it off. Um, in the end, there was still some squeeze off, uh, but this helped prevent some of it. I'm ready for the glue up. Let the glue up begin. If you don't have bar clamps or clamps that are big enough to clamp up a piece like this, you can use pilot holes and screws uh, and or nails with a nail gun to put everything together um, to give the glue long enough uh, to dry. While I was waiting for the glue up to dry, I pulled my table saw back out and began cutting down the edge banding for the piece. I'm using this dark walnut hardwood that's about an inch thick and I set my table saw to just uh, about a quarter inch thick um, to cut these pieces uh, for the edge banding. After that I took another piece of dark walnut hardwood over to my miter saw and I began to cut down the legs. You can see here that I began with a piece of plywood that I had cut the shape of the leg out with uh, beforehand and then I used that piece to, to get the miters uh, for these legs um, to be exact with one another um, and then I just used uh, each leg one after another um, to shape them out. I went back over to the clamped up media console and began to take all of the clamps off. From there I went ahead and started to take off all of the masking tape and the excess glue. Uh, I had to use a chisel and a razor blade to scrape off some of the glue on some of the uh, sections where there was squeeze out. After that I used some wood putty to patch some of the sections where the dado cuts were not completely perfect. I used some, I used some wood putty that uh, matches to the color of the wood after you just use a little oil. I am a big fan of using microfiber towels in the shop. They have a slight abrasive side to them which is great for picking up dust and, and uh, cleaning up work pieces. I then took the pieces of edge banding that I cut down on the table saw earlier in the video and I cut them to 45 degree angles for these corners to attach to the uh, top and bottom of the media console. Then applied a small bead of glue across the first piece of edge banding and used some masking tape to attach the piece uh, to the media console and then I did that to the other side and then I use my clamps to tighten everything together. I may have gotten a bit excessive with the masking tape on these two edges. Once everything had dried, I went ahead and took off all the clamps and the tape, and then I pulled out my chisels and used them to, uh, or one of them, to clean up the excess glue that had squeezed out onto the workpiece. 
I then cleaned up the work area and the work piece and moved on to the next section of edge banding. I then took out my palm router and used a quarter round bit to round over the edges of the legs. I then used a flush trim router bit to uh, cut down the edge banding on the bottom section of the media console. Following, I use my Craig pocket hole jig to drill pocket holes in the legs. Before attaching the legs to the underside of the media console, I marked out their exact placement. Once the legs were attached, I took off the clamps and the tape from the previous edge banding glue up, flipped the piece over, uh, did some cleanup with a chisel and a knife of some of the glue squeeze out, and then I attached the last bit of edge banding. Like before, I used some putty to patch up some of the uh, imperfections in the edge banding. Once the last section of edge banding had dried, I took off the clamps and then I pulled out my sander to sand the edge banding. From there I moved on to the last step in this project which was to oil up the edge banding and the sections that I had patched with putty. really stoked about how this project turned out. The dark walnut and the maple really contrasting woods and I think it looks nice. Subscribe to my channel, I'd greatly appreciate, appreciate it. Uh, that is the best way to support me. Um,